You know that saying, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Well, it seems that in the world of computers, nobody's ever listening to that rule. And there's a new self-contained, it's revolutionary, all-in-one water cooling unit like every few months that is basically the same damn thing again. They haven't even reinvented anything. So now, without further ado, it's EK Waterblocks' turn, who, if you don't already know, is one of the big names in custom water cooling. So this, my friends, is the Predator. So let's find out if it's the kind of Predator you'd want inside your house, like a cat, versus the kind of Predator you wouldn't want inside your house, like Anthony. Now, I'm sure if you're watching this video, then you've already heard of other all-in-one coolers out there like the Corsair H100i or the SwiftTech H220, Anthony, not 240. The premise is pretty simple. They use a heat sink or water block that pulls the heat away from your CPU, and then they transfer that heat to a coolant that carries the heat very, very quickly. This is the advantage over air cooling to a radiator, which has a massive surface area to dissipate the heat and pfft, get it out of the case. There are a lot of advantages compared to a traditional heat sink, including being able to pull the energy away faster and the ability to save some space by relocating the bulk of your cooling components to the outer edges of the case. Not to mention that it's less, you know, weight hanging off of your CPU socket if that kind of thing makes you uncomfortable. So naturally then, it makes sense to expand this type of cooling onto other hot components inside your system, like video cards, for example. That's where expandable all-in-one liquid coolers like the EK Predator come in. Unlike stuff like the H100i, which is completely sealed and you don't want to go messing around with the parts, the Predator, like SwiftTech's model, features fully modular enthusiast-grade components so you can easily expand it into a fully custom water loop. So let's take a quick look at the unit. It comes in triple 120 millimeter and dual 120 millimeter size rads, both of which feature a six watt DDC pump. Yes, a fully enthusiast grade, like aftermarket grade pump. They've both got EK's matte black zero maintenance tubing, 3 8 inch ID, 5 8 inch OD, which by the way is the right size. They've got chrome compression fittings, a Supremacy MX CPU block, and either two or three of their Vardar static pressure optimized fans, depending on the size of radiator you get. One additional item that the 360 millimeter version has are these freaking fantastic quick disconnects. At a glance, you might look at these and go, well, those look kind of shit, frankly. They're plastic and they're like gray and white. It doesn't really match my color scheme. But uh, Anthony apparently had to talk to EK to find this out, but I already knew this. Those, those are colder products. Those are like the shit, which is very different from being shit. They're fantastic. They're medical grade. They clip in nice and easy. They spill nothing and they last for years. These are like freaking awesome compared to pretty much any other quick disconnects out there. I tried to source them years ago to carry at NCIX and due to minimum order quantities and a bunch of stuff, it didn't happen, but it had nothing to do with the quality of the products and they are very, very expensive. EK is not cheaping out on those quick connects. Um, and the reason that they're doing that is that they actually plan on selling expansion kits in the future, which will come with pre-filled water blocks, fittings, tubing, and quick connects, which makes this the first expandable all-in-one cooler that doesn't require you to drain the whole thing, add your components, fill it again, usually a pretty awkward process with all-in-ones, and then try to bleed the system of air bubbles. Right on. Now, if you're feeling a little bit lost from all those like custom water cooling components we listed, that's okay. You don't have to worry about that because where EK has tried to reinvent the wheel and honestly, it's looking pretty successful at this point is in trying to make it simpler. So you don't have to think about that. It's just as easy for the most part to install as any other all-in-one. So you can see the pump and reservoir are both in sort of the tank end of the radiator in order to try to save some space. We've seen similar designs with Swiftex, um, but 
That had the pump and reservoir mounted in one of the fan mounts, which added a lot of thickness and reduced compatibility to a greater extent than EK has done with the Predator. Obviously, the way that a lot of other folks do it is to put the pump on the CPU block, but there are some patent concerns with that, along with issues that I have seen encountered in the past where having a vibrating object on top of the CPU causes a little bit more noise to be transmitted through the motherboard into the case than would otherwise be necessary. So the one thing to watch out there then is with the Predator, you need to make sure your case has enough room. Generally speaking, if you have a case that supports a 360 millimeter or a triple 120 mil radiator, then the 240 will definitely still easily fit. But if you're trying to fit the 360 in, you will need to make some careful measurements as you need about 35 millimeters of additional space on the end. And the radiator is also thicker than what you'll typically encounter with an AIO, with a total thickness of 68 millimeters, including fans. Finally, the other change is that at the bottom of the radiator is an integrated circuit with room for PWM fans, so you can measure RPMs and input power and all that kind of good, good stuff. So that's how they're handling that. Now, that's all great in theory, but the best way to test all this stuff is to actually use it. So Anthony built it into a ridiculously overkill system featuring the Cooler Master Mastercase Pro 5. Full review of this case coming soon, by the way, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. The case has a 360 millimeter radiator mount in the front, but as we mentioned earlier, it requires some creative mounting due to the additional uh, length. Anthony actually had to reverse the unit and mount the fans on the inside since the radiator was too thick to fit inside. Also, due to the mounting points in this case, he only had room to install two fans. But you know what? It actually worked out okay with a Core i7-5820K and a CPU-only loop. Uh, load temperatures were a mere 36 degrees. And then with an Asus Ares 3 295X2 video card in there, idles went up to 23 degrees on the CPU with 35 degrees on the video card and under a worst case scenario we only saw 45 degrees on the CPU and 51 for the video card. Not too shabby considering that Intel burn test and Furmark are pretty synthetic as far as uh, computer loads go. You'll never see anything that high in the real world. So I guess that's pretty much it. There isn't much to say about this kit beyond that. Out of the box it says almost as simple as any other all-in-one CPU cooler, and yet it offers some of the best performance we've seen, and with the pretty much universally modular components, it can easily be turned into a fully custom water cooling loop for less money than actually buying each piece individually. And it looks clean and uncluttered inside the system as well. But there is one downside. Uh, but this will be inherent with any water-cooled system without a dedicated reservoir. Since EK doesn't offer pre-filled water blocks yet, topping up the coolant and bleeding the system of air is not that easy. And there is one other downside as well. This is not a very cheap all-in-one liquid cooler. So there you go, guys. If you're willing to spend a little more, you can get a little more. And if you wanna you know, get the pre-filled upgrades, then that's cool. But if you don't, at least you have the option if you're willing to kind of wrangle around with it a little bit. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for checking out this video on NCIX Tech Tips. If you wanna see more of our videos, they're right over there. If you wanna check out the guys over here on social media, I heard they post uh, pretty provocative pictures on that their Instagram every once in a while. Go ahead over there. If you guys uh, wanna let us know in the comments below what you think, is the EK Predator finally accessible enough for you to consider like custom grade water cooling? Let us know and I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.